Well, hello everyone. We're here again with a, a very useful topic and I'm joined in this by my very good friend, Sherry Baker. Sherry, you can say hello if you wish. Hello, hi Gary, hi everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know Sherry, uh, Sherry is the uh, director of the Gary Craig Official EFT Training Center in the English language. She's been around EFT since its beginning for a way long time ago. Um, my spiritual mentor, and is quite is quite um, well educated on all these topics. And the topic today she brought up, as a matter of fact, and I'm going to read it here. Why is it so necessary to get to the cause of a problem? Why won't unseen therapists just heal the problem as I have asked? Okay. In other words, unseen therapist, I have this so-and-so ailment, just fix it. Well, we might think that something as powerful as the unseen therapist could just fix it. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be very nice. Not necessarily the case. Talk a little bit. Could you, Sherry? Well, it sounds nice. It really does. And there are times, we're all human, where we want to just bring a power in to just fix this mess. I get it, but it actually would not be a great idea. <laughs> it seems like it would be. And so there's a reason for that. Um, Unseen Therapist is here for um, a much higher purpose than cleaning up our mess in fixing the physical body. She's not so much focused on what goes on in this physical world. She's looking more to help wake us up from this physical world. She wants to wake us up to the truth of who we are. We're not these beings who have all these problems and we want the problems solved. We are powerful creations of love who are here to give love and to express love. That's the goal. That's what she's all about. So to have her come in to rearrange our problems in the physical world so they're not really problems and we can continue stumbling along, that's not what she's about. Yeah. The problem as we see it is our sore shoulder. It is our particular disease. It is our relationship with so-and-so that just doesn't work. It is, and these are the problems as we we see them. All of those, as I've said over and over and over again, have causes. Each of them have causes. And their causes are emotional, typically. You know, you're, you're resentful about something and angry about something and guilty about something and so on. And so we need to be woken up, to use your term, from all of that. And once we do, here comes peace. And as you have more peace, I think I'm paraphrasing what you're saying, Sherry. Mm -hmm. As we have more peace, ah, the physical ailments don't have so much cause anymore. And they don't have so much reason to be. And so they tend to fade. But if you aim at the symptom, what was that? Somebody was telling me, it's like, it's like somebody, there's been a lot of accidents at a certain intersection, car accidents at a certain intersection. And somebody comes along and says, look, look at all those skid marks, those tire marks. You know, people had to slam on their brakes. And those appear every time we have accidents. So it must be the skid marks that are causing things. Okay. Well, the skid marks are symptoms, of course. They are symptoms of people having to put on their brakes, etc. But until we really recognize what the causes are and address the causes, we're going to think it's the skid marks we have to address. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> that was better than pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just interjected that. Go ahead, Sherry. More about cause, please. There is something that is known as the law of cause and effect. And in my spiritual understanding, we learned that uh, there's no such thing as a cause without an effect 
and you can't have an effect without a cause. If you got one, you got the other. So if I come in and remove the effect, I remove the symptom, but I leave cause, it has no choice but to produce another effect. It can't just sit there and be cause and be labeled a cause. The reason it's labeled a cause is because it's causing something. Yeah. So if I remove the first something, then the second something has to appear. And so it's really not a great idea to do that. If we, we think it is, remove this effect, remove the symptom, let's say we do, okay, now cause is still operating. So it has no choice but to produce another effect. And it may produce one even worse than the one that was there before because the one that was there before was trying to draw our attention to something, but it didn't. So now we're going to have to produce something that may be even worse, more serious that will get your attention. So we're not really benefiting. <laughs> well, there's a, yeah. And, and there's a, a very logical medical explanation too, for a lot of these things. One of the things any doctor will tell you, and I've talked to many, I've posed this question to more doctors than I can count. And it goes like this. Isn't it true? Doesn't medical science understand that when you're having negative thoughts, you're angry about something, you're guilty about something, and you're fearful about something, that those negative thoughts create within your system a literal cascade of negative chemistry. The, the cortisol goes out of balance. Adrenaline goes out of balance. Hundreds of chemical reactions and repair mechanisms don't work so well and all of that. And your immune system has to go deal with that. If it didn't, you were in trouble. There's only so much of the immune system. So eventually these negative thoughts kind of overflow the immune system's ability to handle. It shows up in all these things. So the cause now are the negative thoughts the angers, the griefs, the guilts, and so on. Those become the cause. You, I don't think you'll find, even though, even though medicine and the medical approach acknowledges this, you don't really see it in the medical books as a cause. You don't see it that way. Um, yet, we're finding if we really get down to cause and do it well, the better we get to cause the physical things they don't have a reason to be there anymore. Your immune system just does what it's supposed to do because it's freed up to do that. Now, that's a very simple, logical engineer's view, if you will, me being an engineer, of cause and effect. So what I think you're getting to here, Sherry, is this: we need to aim at the cause of these things. That's what's really important. And let the effects or the symptoms fade away as they may. And the symptoms and the fading away is what tells us how well we're getting to cause. Did I say okay? Yes. Yes, I think the symptoms are there as a result of the emotions, the angers, the griefs, the guilts, the shame, the whatever. And when we get to those things, we resolve those things, that symptom doesn't really have any reason to be there anymore. It was there like a wake up call. It was there to communicate to you that there's something you need to look at. And sometimes our physical symptom will appear in a place in the body to give you a hint as to what it is you need to look at, which is yeah. kind, of, kind of cool. So it's, you know, we kind of look at physical symptoms as the enemy. We got to attack, you know, we got to figure out how to get rid of it. But it's really, they're just communication wake up calls. They're trying so hard to talk to us. And if we could get the message and resolve the message, which is the emotional, uh, unresolved emotional conflicts, then quite often the effect has no reason to be an effect because the cause is gone. Yeah, all right. Now, let me ask you something you, I don't think you and I have talked about before, so I'm gonna throw a brand new one at you, okay? So here's, here's the client, 
And now our somebody listening into this, for example, they're saying, you mean I'm causing my disease? Now you're giving me guilt because I've, it is my fault that my disease is manifested? Ooh, shame on you for doing this because now you're adding guilt to my burden and you're going to make my disease even worse. How do you respond to that? Hopefully, I'm not going to be giving you guilt by pointing out the power of your thoughts. And if your thoughts are so powerful that they could contribute to a physical symptom, that same power that may have caused that is the power that can uncause it. Or remedy it, yes. To remedy it. Yeah, yeah. So if I thought my thoughts are pointless, they're useless, they have no power at all, there's no way I contributed to that sore shoulder that was given me by a, a power outside of me, that I would think would be more cause for alarm <laughs> because then you're powerless to do anything about it. Yeah, you're absolutely powerless. And now, let me just go a little further with that. So somebody has a bad shoulder because they had an accident. They fell or something and here's their shoulder and you know, it's, it doesn't work very well and hasn't for years. And uh, okay. So that's not one might say, that's not me causing my shoulder problem. And it's got all this pain and everything else. Well, let me talk about that a little bit. Yeah. It may be that you had some accident and yes, yes, you have this injury and yes, that's, that would look that be looked at as a cause of the pain, but there's some, there's something else going on here. And that is, why didn't it heal? See, that's my engineer's question. Bodies heal. You cut them, they heal. You know, they do it naturally without your interference. Okay. And so a sore shoulder, an injured shoulder should heal. An injured back should heal. These things should heal. But sometimes they just simply don't. And what I've found, and this you won't find it, as far as I know in any of the medical books, when we have an injury that just doesn't seem to want to heal, there's almost always an emotional contributor. You're carrying around some kind of guilt or some kind of anger or resentment or some kind of emotional issue, a fear of some kind or something that is keeping that from healing. I, I have many examples where people have had sprained ankles, for example, and, went, and they don't heal like they're supposed to and all of this. And we will try to aim at the symptom being the shoulder, the sprained ankle or whatever. And we only just get so far, it tends to be temporary. And well, well, once in a while, it's magic. Yeah, I, I, there are those cases. But in many cases, no, no, it just won't heal. It's until we start digging around and start asking unseen therapists what's really behind this, that they will tell us, of a, she will tell us of a specific event or she will remind uh, us or the client about so-and-so that happened, da, 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 da. Now we take care of that. The emotional issue is out of the way, and now healing begins to occur. Not in the medical books as far as I know, but I've seen that over and over and over again, almost to the point where it's a guarantee. I really can't say it that way, quite that way, but it's close. So... Well, in addition to maybe holding up the healing, having thinking that's holding it up, our thinking really could contribute to the injury in the first place. Yeah, it was an accident. Okay. Um, maybe there's thinking that was sitting in that shoulder that weakened the shoulder, made it more open to an injury. Like years ago, I had someone who came to me a shoulder that just, you know, there's pain there. It's not healing. And I, I started asking, you know, when did it happen? You know, how did it happen? Well, I was serving in tennis. Okay. And I start asking about what's going on, uh, relationships, you know, what could be happening? Was she upset about something? And she said, well, when are you going to heal the shoulder? And I said, well, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm trying to find out 
what your emotional state of mind was at the time just beforehand. And she says, I told you what caused it. I was serving in tennis. That's what caused it. And I said, well, other people are playing tennis. Well, sure. Everybody serves at some point. Well, yes. Does everyone who serve have a sore shoulder? No. All right. Could it possibly be <laughs> that there's some thinking you're having contributing to a weakness there, which was then open to injury when you serve? For example, have you taken on any more responsibilities at home or at work? You're shouldering a little bit more than you are normally. Well, yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> So the injury could actually be attributed to some thinking, some emotional upset that decided to lodge in the shoulder. And the next time she served, there it went. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. And it's hard to prove or disprove these things. Absolutely. But another possibility is, ah, you talk about shouldering things, and maybe that's true with this particular client. But sometimes our injuries allow us, allow us not to take on certain responsibility, allow us somebody else now is going to take care of us and give us some love and attention. And, and, and we, we want time off from our work and we, we, it becomes an excuse sometimes perverse, perhaps. Okay. Not the kind of thing we're willing to admit, et cetera, but these things do show up in the background. I'm, I'm recalling this was years ago. Uh, dealing with a fellow uh, with multiple cirrhosis sitting in a wheelchair. In fact, my partner at the time, Adrian, was dealing with him, getting great results. I, uh, his urinary problems going away. Numbness in his fingers were going away. He got out of his wheelchair and walked around it. And his wife said, oh, it's a miracle, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so Adrian gave him, you know, some tapping at the time, things to do. Called him back three months later. I hadn't heard from him. Everything was back. Well, have you been doing, doing the tapping? Well, no. Well, we started asking about this. And the reason he wasn't doing the tapping, he was finally willing to admit it, was because he wanted to sit in that wheelchair because he got a lot of love and attention he wouldn't get otherwise. <laughs> he didn't have to go to work. He didn't have responsibilities. And he just didn't want all the rest of it. He would rather sit in the chair. Very important, very important to recognize. If that's what he wants to do, that's his choice, of course. Okay, But at least we recognize it. A lot of these things that happen to us, even they, when they appear to be injuries, are self-caused. We just don't see it yet. But the more you experience you know, unseen therapists and all that, the more these things begin to emerge. You know, so. Anything more, Sherry, on this topic? Well, if Unseen Therapist is here to wake us up, then she wants us to look at our experiences. And so if she really did just come in and take away all the external issues, the physical problems, the, the relationship problems, and all of a sudden it's just gone, well, not only are we going to recreate them because the cause is still there, but we're really, she's not helping us to learn anything, is she? No, and that's yeah. really what we're doing here. <laughs> right. So uh, it's not just about cleaning things up and feeling real good. And gee, now I can go out and shop and, you know, do a, a triathlon. That's not what we're here for, really. Uh, we're here to learn who we are and what could be blocking us from expressing the love that is within us. And that's really what she's all about. So she wants to, she really wants to work with us at the level of cause because that's the meaningful yeah. level. She's a, a doctor that's trained a little differently than the doctors we know as doctors. Yeah. She's, she's looking to bring us peace, looking to bring us love, understanding recognizing that the lack of those things is a cause for just about everything else that we think is a problem in this world. Okay. So it's really getting to that, even though our conditioning may say otherwise, I want the pill because it might makes my pain go away. Well, okay, take the pill. But if you want to get to cause that pill's not going to do it. 
That's what we're doing. Much deeper, much higher in. And there's nothing wrong with taking the pill, mind you, if it's going to get you out of pain so that you can more better, more easily connect with what the issue really is and what you need to look yeah. at. So yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Just know you're not really healing anything unless you also do the work to get to the emotional cause, the emotional yeah. contributors. We but want to get, go ahead, go ahead. All of that said, it doesn't mean we can't aim unseen therapist at a symptom every now and then just to see what happens. She may intend to bring about a healing. Maybe you've done more work than you think and it's time to have whatever the problem is healed. She may want to heal something for you as uh, kind of an example of the power that exists. Maybe you doubt that there's a power. So she might want to show you, look at this, look at what can happen. Uh, so you never know uh, what she might want to do. So I don't want to discourage people from aiming it at a problem, aiming it at uh, a symptom to see what happens, to see if you get any relief. And if you get none, maybe there's some resistance. I mean, it can be very instructive to aim it. Yeah. Uh, and I know some people have, and they've gotten wonderful, miraculous healings. And so I'm <laughs> I, yeah, I'm remembering as you say that this was a year or two ago. It's been so, what, so long ago, I'm not remembering when, but I was chopping vegetables with a very, very, very sharp knife. And I, I ended up, you know, literally cutting off the very tip of my finger. Ouch, ouch. I could even see the bone. Okay. Ouch, ouch. And it was hanging there just by this little bit of skin, you know, that was just flopped over. So what I did, ouch, ouch, big ouch. Okay. And I, I put the skin, the tip back on and I put a bandaid around, but it was bleeding all over the place. Blah, 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 blah. Brought in unseen therapist. The pain was big time, as you can imagine. Within a few minutes, the pain was not gone, but very bearable. It was a noticeable discomfort, okay, but not the big nine or ten that it was. And I for, I'm forgetting now because it's been a while, but that's the kind of thing that would take two weeks, three weeks, a month maybe before it would be all the way healed, if it could get all the way healed, okay. Two or three days later, I took the bandage off and, and I could see a little scar, but now I don't even see the scar. Right. So it healed a lot faster, but an unseen therapist wouldn't have done that otherwise. That's not to say, that is to say, go ahead, aim at symptom. You may get a great result. And that's yeah. very, very good. Hooray. Yes, yes. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. If you don't get a result, that doesn't mean nobody's <laughs> working back there. Okay. <laughs> There's something else for you to look at, whatever it may be. Yes. And sometimes it could just be her wanting to remind you of this tremendous power out there or in here, I should say, that's available to us that we forget yeah. about. We don't think to call upon. But, um, yeah, that's a great story, a reminder. Did she insist? All right, Gary, I want you to sit there and come up with all the possible emotional contributors to, <laughs> to, the, to the cutting of the Come in, come in, heal, help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to do that anyway. I got too much pain, you know. So <laughs> practical, practical, practical. Okay. Yes. So, anyway, great thoughts on cause, Sherry. Anything more you have to add before we call it the day? No, I think that's it. All right. Okay. Well, okay, everybody. Thank you for listening in. Sherry, Sherry, thank you, thank you, thank you. Until next time. 